So pleasure, the pursuit of pleasure, um, is, is a distractive device and is also a device that, that really anchors the mind that the body is real. And it seems to be very attractive. This is what the Course refers to as the attraction of guilt. The deceived mind does not see, does not equate guilt and pleasure. Pleasure is seen as something very uh, desirable, as something to be sought after, and something good. Um, a lot of times you'll hear, you know, God wants you to enjoy yourself. <laughs> take, take part in the, the menus of the world, you know. Uh, enjoy the variety and the spices and the many pleasures of, of the world. And God wants you to enjoy yourself. But from the metaphysical perspective, you know, first of all, God is spirit. God does not know about the physical projected world. God only knows his creation, or his creation, which is the sun. And he knows him as perfect. And this is a pure, abstract, infinite um, relationship that has nothing to do with form in any way. So when we get down to the ego using the body for pleasure, pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain, basically the mind is unaware that they're the same, that by pursuing pleasure one is also pursuing pain. The pleasure is a guise. And both of them act as substitutes for God. Yes. You know, this, this we've talked about the uh, pursuit of wealth in this world and the belief in poverty and lack, you know, in a material sense. And these these are many forms of the same kind of split, the same guys. That if, I, if I'm if i poor and lacking and, and the world of scarcity and so forth, that um, I can yearn for a better day and, and better times and more possessions and an easier life, so to speak. Or... Um, those that actually do seem to accumulate and, and build up the things of the world that are supposed to bring the good life, but still feel the pain and the anguish and the depression, we still find the same thing, that, that the mind is still seeking for uh, happiness, peace, contentment in the world, and uh, it's just seeking in the wrong place. It's in the mind and letting go of the false beliefs where, where the peace and contentment, happiness come. So that's a, a quick look at pleasure. Um, attack is is something that uh, is very important uh, as a defense against the truth. It's a witness that separation has occurred. Um, to to truly see that that separation is impossible seems to be um, at bay or at odds with what the body's eyes show, because if one looks around the world through the body's eyes in a distorted perception, one sees attack in many different forms, verbal attack, uh, physical attack, guns, tanks, bombs, weapons, knives, um, arguments at, at all areas and levels. Um, verbal abuse. Verbal abuse, you know, just... It seems to be a world where attack is is the common is the common experience, and um, the mind cannot attack. The mind is abstract. The mind is one. It it can only um, make up body fantasies where attack seems to be real. Ego uses the body for attack, and it's a fantasy of attack. It, it definitely makes guilt seem real. That if attack is real, is perceived as real, then guilt then is justified. And if guilt is justified, how can one be wholly innocent? How can one be the wholly innocent child of God as one was created? So you're saying it's fantasy because it's all pretend. It's yep. all made up. It's all made up. And it's just on the screen. The, the, once again, the, the deceived mind wants to see the conflict, not in the mind, but in in the world, and it actually, the, under the ego's counsel, will look for it in the world. Now, this is not to say that, that wars per se, or sports games per se, or, or a verbal abuse or anything is evil or bad, because once again, it's, it's the interpretation that has to be looked at. A healed mind can calmly look upon 
any um, sight in the world. The body's eyes will still report to the mind uh, changes in uh, circumstances, changes in the way things look, uh, in symptoms, and so on and so forth. But the healed mind just puts them all into one category, that they are unreal. And once again, you have to really have a clear metaphysical idea of, of, of why this is so, you know, of why sickness is, must be impossible, of why competition cannot be in the world, of why there can't be victims and victimizers in the world, that it's all in the mind, and it all comes down to that subject-object split. So it's because it's all unreal that the Course says, um, for instance, that the world is neutral, that it's neither good nor bad, uh, that it all has to do with how the mind looks upon it. Because yeah. it's all really just a projection or outpicturing of the mind anyway. Yeah. To the Holy Spirit, the world is neutral. To the Holy Spirit, the world is neutral. Because remember, it's, it's just a screen, it's just a projection, it's, these are just symbols that it can use for its purpose. So in that sense, the world is neutral, and the Holy Spirit can use the world for its purpose. To the deceived mind, the world is not neutral, because it has chosen to order the thoughts that make up the world in, in a configuration or a construct that literally make it seem real, and, and literally make it seem that instead of dreaming the world, that it is now a figure in the world, it's a it's a little dream figure, and it's got a it's a person, and it's got to you know do things and defend its life and everything. So in in the to the deceived mind, the world is anything but neutral. It has judged and ordered it. It's always good or bad, isn't it? And or something in between. I mean, it, it's always something. It's never just neutral. Right. To the deceived mind. Now, when in the miracle, we have the miracle is a glimpse. Is, a, is like a reminder, a remembering of, of the neutrality, of the unreality of the world. There's a sense of, of easiness and of, of just a gentle watching because the, the, the mind is seen to be the dreamer and, and there's a real detachment in, in, in the miracle. The mind has literally, um, there's been a choice to give the mind over to Jesus or over to the Holy Spirit to align with, with the right mind. And there's great detachment that comes because the, there's no longer a control issue of trying to control what's happening on the screen. There's just a, a being able to look upon things with, with gentleness without judging them. Talk about judgment a little bit because that is that, that attempt to control what's on the screen is done through judging yes. everything that seems to pass before these eyes. Yes. And judgment, I think, is in a more of a, a common term, you know, judging your brother a lot of times is, is uh, associated with condemnation, put down, um, superior, inferior kinds of, of things, making unequal. And that's the common usage, you know. I. Letting, I, I got to give up my grievances. I got to quit judging, quit, my, criticizing. quit criticizing, and so forth. Uh, judgment goes much deeper than that. But but I think if we follow that idea of judgment is is to make unequal, make uh, appear unequal what is equal. The sonship is one, and a metaphor for this world is that every everyone or every brother is equal. I think when we talk about judgment, we bring it back to the deeper levels. We get to that sense of ordering thought. That this is judgment. Um, there, a condemnation or a criticism is a, a sense of, of an ordering or judging, you know, of um, better than thou or so on and so forth. But when we pull it back to the more subtle realms, we see that um, the entire projection of thoughts, my thoughts are images that I have made, and that the world is is uh, nothing more than projection of, of thoughts, that it's the ordering of those thoughts that maintains the, the illusion of the, the reality of the world. So any kind of ranking in my mind um, 
is an ordering of God, is a judgment. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if what I'm looking at and judging, ranking, comes out in the top position or in the bottom position, whether yeah. it's a one or a ten, it's still judgment. So yeah. the ten is just as much judgment as the one, is what you're saying. Yes. That that any ordering of thoughts, or or if we use the the line from the from the laws of chaos, a hierarchy of illusions. I mean, this is precisely what judgment is: is making a hierarchy of illusions. If I rate and and rank some illusions as more important than other illusions, then then how will there be an awareness that they're all just an illusion? They're equally illusionary or illusory. So. Basically, this is where this is the core of uh, of judgment is this ranking. Um, it's also the reason why uh, the course talks about how important it is the relinquishment of judgment um, in the teacher's manual, and also the very first principle of the fifty miracle principles is that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. And at some point in the course, Jesus is saying that it, it you know, if you can get the first principle, then the rest of this course would be easy, because this is literally the principle that uh, that the ego um, defends against. That to the ego, there is enormous order of difficulty. That in following the spiritual path and, and trying to see the Christ in everyone, and trying not to to order and judge situations and events, that is what the ego is, is trying to hold on to. That's what is its bread and butter. It's that very ordering that holds the world intact for the ego. Yes. For the deceived mind. Yes. So, you know, I've used the example, for instance, of going to a restaurant and uh, that you've gone to a number of times and, for instance, you like their uh, cherry cheesecake and this time you go in and you order your cherry cheesecake and the waiter says, well, we're sorry, we were out of cherry cheesecake. And an experience of of, ups, of disappointment or um, deprivation. deprivation or whatever, once again gets into this ordering of, of thoughts. So the cherry cheesecake in some way was raised up or lifted up or part of the construct of the concept of the person. For instance, I like cherry cheesecake is, is as opposed to pecan pie or uh, you know no ice cream no ice cream or whatever. And you can see from that example a little bit about what we're talking about. It's not that you have to go around judging or condemning or cursing the vanilla ice cream <laughs> or whatever, but but if it is ranked lower than the cherry cheesecake, we have a, a, there's an order of preference. And it's part of the hierarchy of illusions, that literally the self-concept is a construct of ordered thought. I like sunny days more than rainy days. I like warm climates more than, than cool climates. I like to drive a, a Mercury as opposed to a, a Jaguar. You know, on and on and on. I like women who have long hair or long dark hair as opposed to blonde. You know, on and on. I like these television shows better than this. It's, it's all part of the ordering and the ranking. And this is the judgment that holds the world up. These are the stilts underneath the projection of the world, that if you took the stilts away, then the world would, would uh, collapse or fall away and fade away.